Welcome to the module on reading an analog voltage using the analog to digital converter. By the time we get to the end of this sequence, you'll be able to hook up a potentiometer as a voltage divider circuit, supply it with power to generate an analog voltage on the, on the wiper pin. You'll be able to read that analog voltage uh, in as a digital value on an analog to digital converter and convert that digital value into an equivalent voltage. Finally, you'll be able to print out that voltage in a formatted form on the serial monitor so you can check and make sure that everything's working. If we plug the potentiometer in to pins A0, A1, and A2, we can supply a voltage on pin A2, ground on pin A0, and pin A1 will be at some voltage in between uh, using the potentiometer as a voltage divider. You may want to have a look at the section on voltage dividers to get a clearer picture of how those resistances divide. We'll start the Arduino IDE and write some basic code to read the analog to digital converter and write out what time it is and what the analog value is. We'll format that printed information to make it a little more readable. Then we'll set up the output to make sure that we have the voltages we need on pins A0 and A2. And we'll see the digital values going up and down as we turn the knob on the potentiometer. Choosing the right resolution for the analog to digital conversion will help us get more accurate results overall. Although the processor is only accurate to about 12 bits, we can get 16 bits of resolution in the software without losing any accuracy. We need to be careful to avoid integer division errors while we're converting the digital input value from the analog to digital converter into a voltage value in floating point or double precision. We need to be careful to get both our printing and our arithmetic right in these functions. With a little copy and paste, we can do it again for another analog to digital conversion channel, this time A3. Now we can use a lead attached to pin A3 uh, to measure voltages anywhere in our circuit, just as if we had a multimeter. Dig into the detailed version of this video to follow each of these programming steps one at a time so that you can see exactly how everything works and also see some of the mistakes I made along the way. Maybe you won't make as many. Or try it yourself, starting from scratch and not actually copying any code because that's one of the important skills that you'll need in order to succeed in this course.